Twitter. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. Thank you. Mr. Bishop? Excuse me, but I I don't live down here. I am I'm just a tourist. Uh-huh. I guess that's pretty obvious. Did you uh want to talk to me about something? Oh no, 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 no. I mean it's just that I couldn't help hearing you say before that those tickets were for Victor Denimore. That's right. Of course, I, I've heard of Victor Denimore, but I never met anyone who actually knew him. Oh. I read an article about him once that said he was one of the richest men in the world. That's what they say. It called him the mysterious figure on the Riviera. Is he really a mystery? Well, you know. That's amazing. <laughs> Amazing. I wonder what it's like to have so many millions. Well, it's really not as easy as men like you or I might think. Danimo's had a heart attack. Should I call the doctor, sir? Yes. But tell him it's too late. Where's Mrs. Danimo? I believe Mrs. Danimo is on her son terrace. Sir. You make that call. I'll tell her. Nick. Dave. Are you dressed? Swimming suit. Get dressed. Victor's had a heart attack. He's dead. My rub is on the chair behind you. I found him on the floor of the library. He died before he could do anything. Was he alive when you found him? Yes. Did he... Um, did he say anything before he died? No. What's gonna happen now? The usual things. Death certificate, funeral, statements to the press. Wear something black. I'm gonna feel like a hypocrite. It won't take long. Dave. Will you handle everything? I'm paid till the end of the month. There'll be newspaper men and questions and... I'll take care of that. But I have to see them? You can't. You're prostrate with grief.
Fiant au reste ou un tentantes, in vochem de precationisme. Sine quitates observa veris domine, domine qui sustine bi. How much longer? Relax. Relax. Requiescat in pace. Amen. Anima ius et anime omnium fidelium defunctorum, per misericordiam dei requiescant in pace. Amen. Madame, je vous présente mes condoléances les plus chrétiennes. Si vous avez besoin de quoi que ce soit... Merci. And you coming back? In a little while. Don't be too long. I won't be. Terrible, isn't it? Yes. I understand it happened about the time that we were talking in the travel office. That's right. Well, maybe if I hadn't been able... No, it wouldn't have made any difference. Well, that's really neat. You found Mr. Danny Mordenkill? That's right. Did he say anything before he died? No. It's been very nice seeing you again, Mr. Bishop. Um, very nice indeed. There. Who is he? Nobody. And what did he want? What do you want? I have to talk to you. What are you being so mysterious about? I'm not being mysterious. Let's go to some places. Well, let's have a drink. Uh, yes, that's a good idea. Let's have a drink. That's what I said. No, I know. It's a good idea. My sincere condolences, Monsieur Bishop. Monsieur Danemar was a fine gentleman. Yes, a real gentleman. Cognac. Cognac. He cognac de. Now, what did you want to see me about, Doctor? It is a mystery. I thought you said it wasn't. I have reconsidered. I have received a letter. It's from a lawyer in Vienna. Here. What does he want? He wants me, as official medical examiner, to send him a notarized statement as to the actual cause of death of Victor Denemo. Merci de cognac. Fine weather today, huh? Lovely. Beautiful sun, a little bit warm. To cognac, Monsieur Bishop. May I buy you a drink? Oh, it's very kind of you. Thank you. He wants me as official medical examiner, to send him a notarized statement as to the actual cause well, of... send it to him. Why should you ask for it? What difference does it make? Did you ever hear of him? <sighs> Mannheim. Nope. Why should you write me such a letter? I don't know. Danimore died of a heart attack, didn't he? I guess so. What do you mean you guess so? Mr. Denmore was still alive when you found him, wasn't he? Yes. Did he say anything before he died? Why should he say anything before he died? I don't know. Why should a lawyer I never heard of write to me from Vienna and ask for an official statement? Well, stop worrying about it. You'll take care of it? I'll take care of it. Write to him and straighten everything out. I'll straighten everything out. Now, you have another drink. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. You're a gentleman. I certainly am.
Mr. Bishop, my name is Spring, Jonathan Spring. The butler told me that you were expected back shortly. I'm with the insurance company that carried Mr. Danmore's policy. We can go into the library. I'd rather not waste your time, Mr. Bishop. I understand how painful it can be to discuss the passing of one who has been so close to you and to whom you have been so close. What would you like to know? I know most of the details already. I just wanted to confirm the fact that it was you who discovered Mr. Danmore and sent for the authorities. I discovered Mr. Danmore. The butler called the authorities on my instructions. I see. When you found Mr. Denmore, I understand that he was actually alive for a few moments. A few seconds. Seconds? I see. Did Mr. Denmore say anything that uh, might in any way concern me? No. Thank you very much, Mr. Bishop. I'm sorry to have disturbed you. You haven't disturbed me at all. I'm so glad. I let myself out. Good evening. Good evening. Vienna. Vienne, oui. Le numéro est euh, 18 de 26. J'aimerais parler à Monsieur Karl Mannheim. Mannheim, oui. Mon nom? Bishop. Oui, c'est ça. Et quel est ton environ, mademoiselle? Bien. Merci. tout à l'heure. I'm leaving for Paris tonight. Is there any reason why I shouldn't? I can't think of any. You told me you had been paid to the end of the month. Mm -hmm. I'll find out today the house is, too. That and a few thousand in cash is a legacy of the fabulously wealthy Victor Danimore, end quote. Well, you still have the insurance. Victor didn't carry insurance. He couldn't take any without giving some details about his life. And of course, he wouldn't do that. Did you ever wonder about the details of his life? I used to. I stopped a long time ago. I even started to believe all the stories you made up for him. Romanian nobleman, former polo champion, multimillionaire. You did a very creative job, Dave. He paid me for it. Has he paid for me? Did you ever ask him who he really was? No. Women are supposed to be curious, especially wives. Press agents are supposed to be curious. I wasn't married to him. Except for the ceremony, neither was I. Did you ever hear of a man named Spring? Spring? Jonathan Spring. Funny name. No, I never heard of him. Anyone ever question you about Victor? No. Why? Because a couple of people have asked me if he said anything before he died. I asked you the same thing. You were his wife. It's a logical question. What are you thinking about, Dave? We may be the only two people who know that Victor's past was a series of lies that he paid me to make up. But we do know that his money was no lie. And you would like to know where he got it. 
The day he died, I made another reservation for him to Vienna. What does that mean? Wouldn't you like to know what he did on those trips? No. Who's Mannheim? Who? Mannheim. A lawyer in Vienna who wants official certification as to the cause of Victor Danmore's death. I don't know, Dave. I don't know who any of these people are, and if I did, I'd run away from them. Seven years ago, Victor Danmore came out of nowhere and hired you to create a past for him. He bought me to be his wife. I've spent seven years as a beautiful wife of the fabulous Victor Danmore. I've been the perfect hostess at all these glamorous international parties. I've held his arm across all the plush restaurants of the gay European capitals. You wrote the dialogue, I was a scenery. Now I'm the poor but very respectable widowed Mrs. Denimore. That's a legacy Victor left me. A legend he paid you to create. Maybe this is what I've been waiting for. And I like it now. And I don't care who he was or where his money came from. I'm free. And I don't want anything to destroy that. I'm sorry, David. It hadn't been easy. I didn't like being a hypocrite. I didn't like pretending emotion for a man I despised. You hate me for what I've said? No. You loved me once. A long time ago. How do you know? Women know those things. Do they? Did you? You said you knew. Don't be cruel. And how did you feel a long time ago? I wanted you very much. I never knew that. Women can hide when they want. So you just stopped wanting, huh? I stop hiding. I still want. Come with me, Dave. Where? Paris. Let's forget everything that happened. Let's start our own memories. Phone's ringing. No, it isn't. Speaking. Mr. Mannheim in Vienna is on the line. Go ahead, please. Hello, Mr. Bishop. Hello, Mr. Mannheim. Yes? I'm calling in reference to the letter you sent the medical examiner regarding the death of Victor Danimore. Oh, yes. Um, are you connected with the examiner's office, huh? No, I worked for Mr. Danimore. The doctor was curious as to why you should want official certification. Oh, well, I don't imagine it makes any difference if you know now. Also, I was not to speak of it during Mr. Denimore's life. I understand. Uh, what is it exactly? Uh, Mr. Denimore entrusted me with a sealed document and instructions that in the event of his death, I was to obtain official certification of the cause of the death. And if this cause was normal or natural, I was to destroy this document unopened and unread. And if the death was not natural? I was to open it and follow instructions contained therein. I see. Have you opened it? Oh, no, no, no. I'm holding it until such time as I had received certification I asked for. Um, Mr. Mannheim, how long have you had this uh, document? Oh, <laughs> eight years. Mr. Mannheim? Yes? Don't destroy that document. Why? Was there anything wrong about? No, no, no. There's nothing wrong. There's a plane leaving here tomorrow afternoon that arrives in Vienna at 7.30 p.m. I'll be on that flight. I'd like to see you when I get in. Well, I see no harm in that, Mr. Bishop. I will return to my office uh, tomorrow night after dinner. 10.30, not too late for you? I'll be there. Goodbye, Mr. Bishop. Did you know about this? 
Eight years ago. I haven't met Victor eight years ago. Neither had you. Why would he have done such a thing? Because there was the possibility that his death might be unnatural. That's ridiculous. We don't know that. We don't know why Victor went to Vienna three or four times a year. At least I don't. I told you we never discuss such things. Well, wouldn't you like to know? Wouldn't you like to know who you've been living with for seven years? You're going to Vienna? Yes. Can I... Can I do anything to stop you? What are you afraid of, Dominique? Whatever Victor did, whoever he was, he wasn't a happy man, Dave. According to what you said, he was even a frightened man. Don't try to take his place, Dave. You may want to know what I find out. I'll be in Paris, Dave. <laughs> Attention, please. Thank you. Attention. KLM Royal Dutch Airlines announces the arrival of flight number two. It's on. Be right back. KLM Royal Dutch Airlines announces the arrival. Hello, Dave. Tony, how have you been? Fine. Good to see you. You too. You able to arrange the immigration files? No power of the press. No trouble. We'll send your luggage on to the hotel and go directly to uh, central headquarters. Good. Sergeant Baum? Yes? This is Mr. Dave Bishop. I'm Tony Forrest of Associated News. Inspector Romer said we'd go through the information uh, files. I got a message from him. What do you want to know? I'd like to see the entrance card that was filled out last um, January 16th by a Victor Dannemore. Victor Dannemore. D. D for Dannemore. Dannemore. Is that the same one who died last week? That's right. January 16. How often did he make this trip? Oh, a few times a year. It's funny, we never heard of it. I wonder what a man does with all the money he had. You're sure it was January 16? Yeah, flight number... Uh... 412 from France. What uh, address did he give in Vienna? Residence Vienna, Hinkelstrasse. Hinkelstrasse? What's wrong? Do you know Hinkelstrasse? No. It's one of the worst slum sections in the city. You sure? Hinkelstrasse 16. If I had that much money, I wouldn't live in Hinkelstrasse. I don't live in Hinkelstrasse now. Thanks, Sergeant. Thank you very much. No trouble at all. Would one of you gentlemen please sign the record book? I still have a couple of things I want to do, Tony. I'll meet you back at the hotel in about an hour. Okay. But Dave, Hinkelstrasse is not one of the better parts of Vienna. Thanks. No, no trouble at all.
Mr. Dunamore? Mr. Dunamore? Who are you? I am the housekeeper. Uh, you are not Mr. Dunamore? No. No, my name is Bishop. How long have you worked here? Uh, why do you ask me that? If you want to know something, why don't you ask Mr. Dunamore? He'll be here tomorrow. No, he won't be here tomorrow. Oh, yes, he will. Mr. Dynamo had an accident last week. Accident? An accident? Oh, Mr. Dynamo is dead. He died. Oh, yes, Mr. Dynamo died. Uh, I should have known. How often did he visit here? Uh, I should have known he died. Huh? Yeah. Oh. He came three times each year. And he always told me in advance when he would be back. And he, and he was never late. No. Not once was he late. Uh, uh, Mr. Denno was a very big businessman. And he used to to come here and discuss business uh, with other big businessmen. Uh, what do they discuss? Uh, of course, I never listened to what they discussed. I'm trying to contact the men that used to meet Mr. Danamore here, so that I can tell them Mr. Danamore passed away. Huh? Uh, no, uh, I never listened. Putting it out when you leave. I'll put it out. Goodbye. Uh, uh, I did hear one name once. It was a Swedish man he used to come. I remember it because it was such an odd name. Uh, and it was the only name I ever heard. Uh, from Stockholm he came. Olaf Lindqvist. Uh, I guess it doesn't make any difference now. He won't come anymore. Because, you see, Mr. Dunamo died. Whiskey and plain water. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Bishop? Yes? There's a gentleman over there who'd like to offer you a drink. Did he send you over? Yes, sir. Good evening, Mr. Bishop. Good evening, Mr. Spring. If that's still your name. Of course it's my name. Why should I lie to you? Please sit down. What would you care for? An explanation? I can see it's going to be very difficult to talk to you, Mr. Bishop. Practically impossible, Mr. Spring, if that is your name. I told you it is my name. Yeah, I know. Why did you come to Vienna? I thought you wanted to tell me something. I do. Start. I see you are a very, very shrewd man, Mr. Bishop. Mm, I'm very susceptible to flattery, Mr. Spring. Don't play on my weaknesses. I have been employed to follow you and to report on your activities. You've been employed to follow me? Yes. By whom? That I cannot tell you, but I can say that you would know his name if I could tell you. I can say that anyone in the world would know his name. Sounds like a very important man. He is. And why is he interested in me? That is why I'm speaking to you, Mr. Bishop. Because the man who employed me is interested in you and I, too, wonder why. I don't believe it is because of something you know. At least just yet. It must, therefore, be something that you may come to know. 
I am therefore offering you my assistance. Free of charge, without payment and without obligation. To do what? To find out what it is that has made you suddenly so important. You are, let us say, voyaging in the dark. And if you are successful, this voyage must eventually lead to my employer. Otherwise, he wouldn't be interested in you. And then I will become important because then you will know what my employer fears. And I, of course, know his name. You will know what and I will know who. Perfect situation for marriage. Well, why would a man as big as your employer hire you? In time, you will understand that. And now, let me contribute one word toward your voyage in the dark. One thought. Blackmail. Blackmail? It could explain so many things. It could explain Mr. Danmore's unexplained source of wealth. It could explain his periodic meetings in Vienna. And to protect the identity of the men who meet, it could so perfectly explain the reason for a blind housekeeper. A thought. Hi, Dave. How'd it go? That might also explain why everybody asked, did he say anything before he died? I don't get it. Dodo, let me have the phone, huh? Yes? Oh, yes, uh, Mr. Bishop? I will be waiting for you. Yes? Mr. Mannheim. Yes? Mrs. Denimore. Mrs. Victor Denimore. Oh. oh, please, come in. Thank you. Uh, please, sit down. Thank you. I'm really sorry to trouble you at this hour, Mr. Mannheim, but the matter is, I believe, quite urgent. Whatever I can do for you, Mrs. Denimore? It's in reference to the envelope my husband entrusted to your safekeeping, Mr. Mannheim. I see. Would you turn that document over to me? Oh, well, those were not my instructions, Mrs. Denimore. Oh. <laughs> I can only say, Mr. Mannheim, that I admire my husband's judgment in giving you such great trust. You're very kind. Is that document my husband gave you sealed? Sealed and dated by your husband in my presence. I see. Would you have any objection to showing me that seal, Mr. Mannheim? Oh. I can see no objections, Mrs. Denimore. As your husband's heir, you may have the right to determine for yourself that the seal has not been tampered with. Thank you. Would you care to see it now? Yes.
shut up, will you? Will you listen to me? Will you shut up? Mercy's in laws. Ich weiß nicht. Ruf die Polizei. What happened? I saved your life, that's what happened. How did you just happen to be on the spot? I didn't just happen to be on the spot, I followed you. Why? I told you I was hired to follow you. Besides, I've got to do that to protect your life. How can you find out anything and do me some good if I let you die? Let go my collar! Who's the man who's paying you to follow me? Don't be silly, I can't tell you that. I thought I was holding you. A man's got to learn to protect himself in today's world. It's really a jungle, you know. What happened up there? Some man that was holding a document was murdered. Did you do it? What kind of document? Something Dannemore gave him a long time ago. The blackmailer's protection. A sealed document somewhere in the world in the hands of an honest man. What's your next step? I'll follow you anyway. Stockholm. Stockholm? I got the name of one of the men from the housekeeper on Hintelstrasse. Wonderful. Now we have a link. Stockholm, eh? Beautiful city, Stockholm. Haven't seen it in years. Progress, progress. <laughs> Six zero oh, two four one three, please. Uh, operator, never mind. Thank you. Barrier Vagan, twenty eight. Wait. Uh, wait. Wait here. I go there. You wait here. Ah, I got the story. I went there. Good. Oh, oh, forlot. You heard it at the knacker. Excuse me. Do you speak English? Yes, I do. Oh, I 
Excuse me, I'm sorry. Can I help you? Yeah, I'm looking for uh, a Mr. Olaf Lindquist. Mr. Olaf Lindquist? Yes. This is his house, isn't it? Yes. Is something wrong? Mm. Mr. Lindquist was my father. He died five years ago. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I... It's quite all right. Perhaps I can help you. Well, uh, I'm a reporter. I'm doing a story on another man who died just recently. A, uh, Mr. Victor Danimore. In going back over his affairs, I came across your father's name. I don't remember my father ever talking about Mr. Danimore. Of course, that was a long time ago. But perhaps my mother would know. May I speak with your mother? She's not in now. In fact, the house is really closed for the summer. We are staying in our uh, country place. I see. Uh, How long do you plan being in Stockholm? Oh, I just came here to talk to your father. Oh, oh, that's pity. I was, I was just going out to see my mother now. If you don't mind the boat trip, you could come with me. You uh, go out to the country by boat? <laughs> Oh, it isn't really the country. It's an island in Jajapelago. <laughs> there are a lot of islands out there. I have a uh, taxi waiting. Hi. Is this your first trip to Stockholm? First trip? Oh. Then I have to point out all the interesting things to you. You don't have to. I'd like to. Over there we have... Um, You're not looking. I'll look. What time is it? Uh, 12.15. Why? Are we late? No, we are early. We can stop at the palace. You're going to show me the palace? Yes. Sure we have time? Yes. Certainly. You'd like to see it, wouldn't you? Certainly. <laughs> Okay, Fenta. <laughs> oh, I love catching boats and trains at the last minute. Oh, yeah, great fun. Let's go up front and stand in the boat. Is it allowed? Sure. Most people don't do it because they don't like the wind and the spray. Oh. That's true. Oh. When does that boat we came out on go back? They go back and force all the time. All the time. Mother? Hello, darling. Hello. I'd like you to meet Mr. Bishop, Mother. How do you do, Mr. Bishop? How do you do? Mr. Bishop came out to speak to you about father. About my husband? Well, that actually concerns a man I believe your husband may have known. Oh, I see. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Can I offer you some refreshment? No, thank you. Don't hesitate if you change your mind. Now, what can I tell you? Have you ever heard the name Victor Danamore? Victor Danamore? In relation to my husband? Yes. Do you know that there was some connection? between this uh, Mr. Danamore and my husband? I believe there was, Mrs. Lindquist. May I ask why you believe this? It might help me to place this name. Mr. Danamore died last week on the Riviera. I have been asked by his wife to investigate Mr. Danamore's past with the idea of possibly writing her husband's biography. I was given some personal papers to examine, and amongst these was a notation that Mr. Danamore was to meet your husband in Vienna. In Vienna? Yes. Was this paper dated, Mr. Bishop? Unfortunately, no. 
As I remember, a few years prior to my husband's passing, he traveled to Vienna, I believe, uh, once each year. What was the purpose of these visits? I assumed it was business. Excuse my ignorance, but could you tell me the nature of your husband's business? My husband was an industrialist, Mr. Bishop. I see. He was also a great philanthropist. What kind of man was this, Mr. Danmore? Mr. Danamore was also a philanthropist. Oh, that may have been their connection. Probably was. Well, I'm sorry to have taken up your time. You've been very kind. <laughs> Not at all, Mr. Bishop. Could you tell me when the next boat leaves for Stockholm? Uh, let me see. Um, uh, Brita, you'd know that. There is one in about an hour, but there is another at nine o'clock. Why don't you stay and have dinner with us? Oh, no, really, I don't want to... Oh, that's an excellent idea. I'm afraid it will be nothing elaborate. Just Brita and myself. But you are more than welcome. If you're sure I'm not imposing. Oh, it will be a pleasure, Mr. Bishop. And now I'll take charge. <laughs> Try it again. Dean school, mean school, a la vaco flicker school. Oh, wonderful. What does it mean? It is a toast to all pretty girls, Mr. Bishop. A very standard Swedish tribute. There are a lot of others I could teach you. You stop right there. But Mr. Bishop wouldn't understand what they mean anyway. But I will. Förlåt, förlink vi sista turen till Stockholm inställd på grund av dimma. Oh, tack så mycket. I am terribly sorry, Mr. Bishop. But it seems as though a fog has come up. And the last boat back to Stockholm tonight has been cancelled. Oh, I am very sorry. This must disturb your plans. It's no inconvenience to me. I'm just sorry to be suddenly forced on you as a house guest. It is a pleasure to have you, Mr. Bishop. My only regret is that I may not be able to provide you with a toothbrush. <laughs> Shall we have our coffee in the living room? You sure you won't be cold? Oh, no. You see, it isn't chill at all. I like the fog. Why? Why? I don't know. Don't you like it? Yes, sometimes. It's peaceful. Yes, it's peaceful. And it's intimate. I'm glad you stayed for dinner, Dave. And I'm glad the fog came in. Why are you glad? <laughs> you always make me tell you why I think things. Why? Why not? Are you teasing me again? Maybe. Just a little. Aren't you glad you, you stayed? Yes. Why? So I could stand out here in the fog and talk to you like this. I guess that's uh, why I am glad, too. Why do you smile? Because I like the way you say things. Oh, is it different than the way um, other girls say things? Well, it's a little more direct than usual. Oh. Well, that's not good, is it? Oh, I think it's very good. Mm. I should be more um, sophisticated and be able to have subtle and highly charged dialogue with members of the opposite. I think your dialogue is fine. You are sophisticated. Now, why do you say that? Because uh, you have been around the world and seen a lot of things and uh, probably made love to lots of women. Thousands. It's probably true. And it makes me feel uh, in, uh, in... inadequate. Is that the right word? Well, it's a word, but not a very good one. You're fresh in a world that's, that usually sounds stale. Where you hear the same things over and over again. And after you say them enough, and you get bored enough hearing them, people call you sophisticated. If I were sophisticated, I'd know what to say now. Maybe it's better you don't. 
That can't be better. Yes, it can. Would you like to go for a walk? If you like. No, no, but I think maybe it's better. We can walk down to the water. Can you see anything? <laughs> maybe a light here and there. But it's a nice feeling. You can hear the water and imagine anything you want. Are you sure you know the way? Oh, yes. I've done it all my life. I could probably do it blindfolded. Oh, there was another step. I know. Oh, it's funny that I forgot it. It's funny. Um, yes, it is. Uh, my English is not so good. You're doing fine. There's a boat out there. I hear it. Mm, you, you are not helping me. I'm not trying. We have an expression in English, all's fair oh, in love. Oh, we have the same expression in Swedish. Ah, now, you see how well you do understand <laughs> the language. It uh, even gains something in the translation, especially when you don't want to talk. And uh, I knew there was another step. Is it possible to fall in love the first day? They say it's possible at first sight. We have that expression too. Let's go down to the water, Dave. But uh, you lead the way. Why me? <laughs> You're sure? A trip. All right, we'll see. appear to have gone well? It was a dead lead, literally. Benquist died five years ago. What are you going to do now? Shave. Where were you last night? Fogbound on an island. Lindquist's summer place. Hmm? Oh, you've been busy. He was a very big man, our Mr. Lindquist. Yep, that's what his wife tells me. What do you think he could have done to give uh, Dunmore a chance to blackmail him? Maybe we were wrong from the beginning. What do you mean? Maybe Dunmore wasn't a blackmailer. 
Maybe what he was doing wasn't quite respectable, but that could be a long way from blackmail. That's why it must be important. Well, then somewhere I've missed it. No. Somewhere without knowing it, we have made tremendous progress. What made you think so? Because this morning, I was ordered to kill you. What did you say? I was ordered to kill you. When? This morning. Why? Because you made the trip here. But I didn't learn anything. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Then we are going to have to retrace our steps and find out what we have overlooked. And now we must move quickly. What about your uh, orders? I can delay for a while. Thanks a lot. Don't misunderstand your position or mine. Men's deaths are not ordered every day, nor, on the other hand, is it as rare as nice people might think. You are fortunate that we are working together. Suppose I were to say that we're not working together anymore. That would be unfortunate. All right. I'm saying it. That's foolish. Well, I've been foolish before. But you've had the opportunity to be foolish again. Well, let's see if my luck holds out. I tried to stop him. I tried to stop him from going to Vienna. I've come up here to try to stop him. As I said, he's an opportunist. And at the moment, completely ruthless. He would lie. He would pretend. Anything. To uncover the connection that existed between your father and my husband. If there was a connection with your husband, let Dave expose it. What harm could it do? Why are you trying to stop him? My husband was a blackmailer, Miss Lindquist. What has that to do with my father? Your father was not the great philanthropist everyone believed him to be. He was a traitor to his country. He had sold a birthright for a promise of power and still greater wealth. Mr. Danmore knew that. And each year they met in Vienna and your father paid. He paid to live until he couldn't live with it any longer. And then he killed himself. <laughs> you won't find anything. Well, it was worth a try. Sorry to disturb your effects. Why did you sock me? Why did I... You pulled a gun on me. So you knocked the gun out of my hand. You didn't have to sock me. Now I feel like doing it again. Why are we fighting? We've got everything to gain if we work together. Yeah. You can never figure out what I'm supposed to know. That's why David Bishop made love to you. That's why he came here. That's why he won't stop until he hears that story. Why? Because he wanted to blackmail. It's that when my husband died. But how can I stop him? You have an appointment with him for lunch? Yes. Take him somewhere where you can be alone. Tell him there was a connection between your father and Victor Denimore. That your father was being blackmailed. But he knows that already. It will make him believe the rest of the story. And the rest of the story must be cheap and sordid. Tell him it was an affair with another woman and that this woman consorted with Victor Danamore to blackmail your father. But that's horrible. Yes, but it will stop him. Suppose I tell him the truth. Then you will never stop him. Your newspaper man friend Tony Forrest has the answer. What are you talking about? He sent you a cable telling you to return to Vienna immediately. He has uncovered the complete story of your former employer. He said he'll do nothing until he sees you. Where's the cable? It was telephoned from the central office. They asked for you. 
So I told him I was you. Hello, operator. Get me the central office, please. Why didn't you tell me this when I first came in? If Tony Forrest has the answer, I have to make sure that we are still working together. Hello, central office. This is Dave Bishop. I understand there was a cable for me from the end. Would you please look it up and read it back to me again? Don't bother. Him very much. Even if he's everything you say is. I love him. I'm sorry, my darling. I'm so sorry. Hello. Yes, she is, Mr. Bishop. Yes, I will put her on. Hello? Yes, Dave. Yes, of course, I understand. I'll wait for you. No, Dave. I'll wait for you. You see, you're wrong. He's dropping everything. We are not having lunch together because he received a cable from a friend of his in Vienna. It's urgent business, and he has to catch and explain. We don't have to lie to him. We don't have to tell him anything. And he's coming back, he says, when he finishes. It means it's too late. He has another lead to another man. There are three other men. And none of them are dead. Perhaps he will forget us. He'll forget you until he has broken one of the others. And then he'll be back. And there won't be any point in lying to him then. You know everything there is to know. What are you going to do? Stop him. I'm going to offer him a partnership. A full and complete partnership. And if he doesn't accept, what did you mean she would offer him a partnership and if he didn't accept? What did you mean she would stop him? Pita. Please. Listen to me. Listen to me, Brita. I won't let you make this call. I won't let you destroy what I have built for five years. What have you built? You said my father was a liar and a traitor. Yes, he was, but only we know that. How can you say that? Who is that woman? That woman is the wife of Victor Danmore. She's taken his place. I will now be blackmailed as your father was. And I will pay as he paid. And I will stop anyone from revealing this at any cost. Hello? I'd like the number of the Grand Hotel. Yes, hurry, please. Yes? One, zero. Hello? 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 Mother, open it! You don't know what you're doing! Mother, please, open it! You can't do this! Mother! There's a KLM flight 142 that leaves at 6 o'clock and that arrives in Vienna at 2 o'clock in the morning. 
And one that leaves at midnight. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll take the six o'clock flight. Will you please send the ticket to the Castle Hotel? Mrs. Denimore. If Tony Forrest's information is as complete as his cable indicates, he may have some reservation about giving it to you. He trusts me. That's good. It's nice to have trust between friends. It's good for friendship. Like I trust you. I told you I'd make the deal with you. I know. I knew you would. There's so much money involved. This is your pilot, Captain von Berg. Welcome on board KLM flight. Just one thing. Yes, my friend. The, is good. the Lindquist family is out. No matter what we find. Oh. The girl you spoke to on the phone? They're out. He's dead, and there are others. We can afford to be generous. To the hotel. Yes, Tony will be expecting me there. I think the best thing would be if we'd separate here. When you have the information we both need, call me at this number. All right. How long will you be there? I'll be there until I hear from you or until I don't. Just another word of caution. The order I received and ignored can be given to others. First you and now we are gambling for very high stakes and we must be extremely cautious. We must meet cautiously, and we must travel cautiously. I'm inclined to rely on your judgment in such cases. The first mark of the talented amateur is that he respects the professional. Au revoir. Au revoir. Don't turn, Mr. Bishop. Just listen to me. Who are you? I'm the man who sent the cable that brought her here and signed your friend's name to it. Why? I can explain better as we ride. Please enter the sedan parked on your right. Well, if you're not threatening me, I have nothing to lose by riding with you. If you are, I have no choice. You have saved me the trouble of an explanation. <laughs> I'm just a tourist. Pierre Sanders, Swiss counterintelligence. What is this? Not a very long drive. Viviana ran long today. I want to know if I can get a message to someone on that plane when it arrives. It has arrived. Wait! Is there a plane tonight? Reserve a seat for me. Mr. Smith, American Intelligence. 
Mr. Brown of British CID, and Mr. Jones of Swedish counterintelligence. The names, of course, are not real, but the positions and nationalities are. And would you sit down, Mr. Bishop? Would you care for a whiskey, Mr. Bishop? Yes, thanks. Cigarette? No, small please. This uh, meeting was called rather suddenly, Mr. Bishop, and uh, we haven't decided who should explain why we asked you here. I don't mind starting it. I'm a great fan for talking. We'll probably need this after being picked up at the airport by our friend here. Everything go well? I don't know how well it's gone, but uh, I'm here, if that's what you mean. <laughs> Nicely put, Mr. Bishop. Yes, you're here, and uh, you want to know why. Exactly. You are here, Mr. Bishop, because for seven years you worked for Victor Danimore. Because you went to Vienna. Because you spoke to Mr. Spring. Because you were almost accused of the murder of Mr. Mannheim. Because you went to Stockholm and spoke to the family Lindquist. And because you answered the cable we took the liberty of sending. How long have I been watched? since you first met Mr. Sandos in the travel agency on the Riviera. Why? Because you wanted to know who Victor Danimore was. The story of Victor Danimore, Mr. Bishop, is a saga of our times. It is the story, the true story, the world forgot. And the story isn't finished yet. It started way back in 1938 with a man who planned to conquer the world. A man called Adolf Hitler. In 1938, one year before his armies moved, Hitler took his first step towards war. No one knew it at the time. But in 1938, he made a contract with a man in each country he planned to invade. A man who was wealthy, a man who was powerful, a man who would sell his country for more power. And he selected well. You understand, Mr. Bishop, these men were to do nothing, and did nothing until Hitler's armies entered their country. But at that point, these men became the rulers, the gaulighters of their country. In Norway, it was Quisling. In France, it was Dea. In Holland, Musset. In Belgium, De Grel. These are the men who made the deals, the men the world knows and talks about. But there are four men the world doesn't know, whom the world's forgotten. The men who remained unknown because Hitler failed to conquer. A man, Mr. Bishop, in your country, the United States, a man in my country, England, a man in Switzerland, and a man in Sweden. These men who waited for Hitler's armies were left behind, were forgotten. But they still exist. And these are the men that Danimo blackmailed? Yes. The four forgotten men of our times. The men who proved in every occupied country of the world that they could throw their nations into confusion, delay, command, decisions, drive patriot against patriot. This is the true, efficient instrument of modern warfare. Not a new bomb that can destroy more than an old bomb, but a group of men who can stop a bomb, who can turn a cannon. And these men remain today, waiting, as they waited before. How long have you known that these men existed? We've always known it. Every intelligence agency in the world has known it. We've never known who these men were, but we've always known they existed. And we've never stopped searching. Our first break came when Olaf Lindquist committed suicide. Yes, he committed suicide. We permitted Mrs. Lindquist to conceal this fact. We never told her why, but we ourselves did not want this information revealed. 
Lindquist was the only step we had. It took five years of the most intensive investigation before we were able to discover a connection between linguist and animal. Unfortunately, I arrived too late. And so you started watching me? Not really you, Mr. Bishop, but the man who was watching you. Spring. We had hoped that one of the men Danny Moore blackmailed could not resist the temptation of sending an envoy to ask questions to find out if his hidden identity was in jeopardy. And Mr. Spring appeared. And that's why I'm here. You now know what, Mr. Bishop? And Mr. Spring knows who? The Englishman. Yes, my man. And through him, the others. What do you want me to do? Call Spring. See him. Tell him you know the what. He'll ask you what it is, but don't tell him. He won't tell you who his man is either. Together, you, you'll go to this man. Once you've met him, you'll conduct yourself as Spring expects you to. You'll make your blackmail threat and leave. You'll then be contacted and pass his identity on to us. Sounds simple enough. From the moment you contact Spring, you'll be in the greatest possible danger, both from Spring and from the man whose orders he's disobeyed. Don't underestimate Mr. Spring at any time. He's a professional spy of the highest caliber. If he for a moment suspected this meeting, I don't believe we could prevent him from killing you. You know that I agreed to make the deal with Spring? Yes. And you're still willing to trust me? Yes. Thanks. Good luck. I'll probably need it. We all will. You must contact us, but only in an extreme emergency. Remember this telephone number. 123120. 123120. When shall I call Spring? I believe as soon as you return to your hotel. I'll drive you within a few blocks. It's best if you walk the rest of the way. Right. Well, goodbye. Bye. Good luck. Thank you. Victor Danimore. Victor Danimore was the Russian. And you know where the hotel is? Yes, three blocks down. Remember, Mr. Spring is a very cautious and sensitive man. Any missteps on your part? The appearance of any factor he considers unusual, and our plan will collapse. That means you won't be very close to me. Only as close as we consider possible. Good luck. Thanks. Thank you. 
prisons. A proposition, Mr. Bishop. I'm sorry the invitation here was a little rough, but you have a whole lifetime ahead of you to enjoy the money you're going to make. Well, I was doing this for patriotism. That's right, Bishop. That's what you said. Very effectively, too. And my associates believe you, which is perfect. You go right ahead with the plans I was outlined to you, except that after spring brings you in contact with the man he works for, you will contact me, alone. I take care of Spring. You and I will be partners. Like you and Spring? No. You get one payment when you give me the name of the man. And after that, you and I will never see each other again. How much? One hundred thousand dollars. Give me a cigarette. I can't raise that much. I think I could raise it on the open market. I might even be able to get it for the first year's payment. All right. A quarter of a million. I'll get back to the hotel. How low are you, are, Bishop? Every minute of every day. I'm assigned to you. It's your first wrong move. I kill you. I can always say you were a traitor. I believe that. You can go off the council here. Oh. Give me one, two, three, one, two, oh. safety in the future that you don't take any chances. As few as possible, Mr. Bishop. Congratulations. What did Forrest have to say? Everything we wanted. You've got it? Completely. I don't know how much Danamore made out of it, but we can make him look like an amateur. When do you want to meet? Suppose we say in half an hour in Hyden Square. You know where that is? Hyden Square? Yeah, I think so. But why there? When I meet a man who is supposed to be alone, I like to see he is alone. I'll be alone. Hyden Square in 30 minutes. It's as big as we hoped, eh? Bigger. This isn't blackmail, this is a gift. Breeder, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? How did you get here? She said, she said you were a blackmailer, and I didn't believe it. Who said it? Mrs. Danamore. Mrs. Danamore? Where did you see Mrs. Danamore? When? 
She said you were ruthless, dirty. And I said I was in love with you. Rita, wait, listen to me. Wait. Let me go, Dave, please. First, listen to me. I don't know how Mrs. Danamore got to you or what she said to you. She said you were a liar. Yes, I lied to you, but everything I said wasn't a lie. You said you loved me. That wasn't a lie then, and it isn't now. Then why did you leave? Why did you come to Stockholm in the first place? Why did you say those things on the telephone? This isn't blackmail. It's a gift. It was blackmail. It isn't anymore. What is it now? If it isn't anymore, tell her. Tell her what's happened to change you in the last few hours. She understands those things. Convince her you are not a liar. You move fast. I said I would try to stop you. What's your next move? That's yours, Dave. I have an appointment. It's late for an appointment. It's early for this one. Something has changed since we last spoke. How did you find out about Lindquist? I followed you. From where? From the time I read that a Mr. Mannheim was found murdered. I remember you went to see him, Dave. Did you also remember the address? Dave. Dave, don't go. Don't go where? If you want everything Victor had, Dave, you can have it. I'm offering it to you. Everything. I don't want everything. Who is it? That girl? She's part of it. <laughs> don't be a fool. If I'm not alone, it'll destroy everything. But you are in danger. Wait. Here, get out of this light. Dave, I don't know what you are doing. I don't care. I only know I love you. I love you too, Brita. 
I love you, but you can't stay here. You can't stay in Vienna. Go back to Stockholm. Wait for me. Will you trust me? I'll trust you too, Dave. Make your decision. What choice do I have? You can live with me now, before spring arrives. And we will have a partnership. A business partnership, if that's all you want, Dave. And you'll give me the names of the men? No. I'm in position to ask for some advantage. And you don't have to trust me, I have to trust you. Yes. Dave! I know. Don't move, Brita. That's right, Miss Lindquist. Dave knows very well I'm perfectly capable of using this. Like you used it on Mannheim. Like I used it on Mannheim. Then I have no choice. No, you have no choice, Dave. Except this way, you can at least save a life. Dave, you can't! Don't say anything, Mr. Bishop. He's too close. Slowly. Don't speak. Move quietly. Careful now. Wait for me, Brita. I will. Where are they going? I don't know. But every move they make will be watched and guarded and timed. Their first stop will be England. And through the man there, we will learn about the other men. First the Swiss, then the American. And then we'll watch them as they watched us. This is a story of today that began yesterday and will end tomorrow. Mm -hmm.